What is going on, Burke fam? I am Steve. Hashtag Team No Sleeves. <laughs> For Burke Family 54 Comics, welcome to another live stream. Today, I got some pretty awesome guests joining me to talk exclusive comics. Before I bring them in, let's hit that intro. All right, first guest I'm going to bring in is one of the most amazing people. They're both amazing uh, in the comic book community. We got Brian from Simple Man's Comics with 19,000 subscribers. What's up, man? What's up, guys? I'm just here so I don't get fined. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Great to be here as always. It's my second time being on your channel, and it, it, I'm still nervous about it. But yeah, great community. Always love coming on your channel. And like I said, through this YouTube stuff, we've become great friends online as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Brian, for joining us. And then we got John from the 616, one of the most awesome dudes that I've met. What's up, man? How you doing? Hey, what's happening, guys? How you doing? Dude, we are doing well. We are doing well. We're going to be talking exclusive comic books, just comic books in general, and just hanging out and having a good time. We got some people up in the chat. I just want to say hi to them really quickly before we get started. Uh, the Isaiah, what's up, man? The Lost Kid, how's it going? Karate Kevin, one of my good friends. He's got a pretty big channel as well. Slim Comics and more. How's it going? Uh, DJ Lynx. What's up, Dan? How you doing, man? Uh, Robert, Flash6792. How's it going, brother? He's uh, one of the people that's ordered from you before. Um, Legion of Comics. What's up, man? Uh, he's also ordered from uh, the 616 before. Freaky Low E. What's up? Uh, Austin LeMay. How's it going, man? Uh, tell me why the ad I just watched was an Ace Hardware ad. <laughs> uh, my parents own an Ace Hardware, uh, two of them actually, and I used to work there. And there's actually a commercial on my channel, so that's why Ace is the place. Yeah, there we go. There we go. There we go. Brian and John. Oh, and Burke. Yes. <laughs> uh, dude. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, okay, so we're gonna be talking exclusive comic books. I appreciate everyone for joining us. I know there's like ten or twelve people live right now, but I appreciate everyone for hanging out and i do appreciate my uh channel members family tier we got ruben guzman legion of comics that's mark uh the cover collector sam mike v keith over at deep dive comics robert flash 6792 dustin comic book poser and selwyn collectibles lounge thank you for being in the family tier and then dan dj links and a friend tier and all my supporter tier as well all right you guys ready to talk some comic books and exclusives? Yeah, definitely. All right, cool. Let me pull up my questions here really quick, and we get started. Do you guys want have anything you guys want to say real quick off the top about uh, you know your YouTube channel and your online store before we get started? I just want to say, John, you look really nice tonight. Thanks. It's the lighting. My, I got my wife to do the lighting before we. <laughs> and, and John does look John, well. John, sorry, we're not rocking team no sleeves, but I do love the Disney shirt. Oh yeah, so uh, so yeah, right. this is from 2019. We went to Disney World, and uh, my wife had shirts made, and on the back, of course, you know, hers said Queen, and our daughter said Princess. So you know that I am the king. So wore that last year. That was a good time. He, uh, he's, got, he's got sleeveless Disney shirts. My big ass when we went, my whole family had shirts that had pizza slices on them <laughs> with Mickey. The pepperoni was in shapes of Mickey's. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, everyone, hey, what's up, Dust Till Dog? How's it going? Hey, right. that's my wife. That's my wife. Oh, that's your that's your wife. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. What's up, wifey of uh, the Six One Six Comics? How's it going? Uh, Zora's Tigers. Team no sleeves. That's what's up. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm going to give you guys just a minute or two to talk about your YouTube channel and your online store. So, Brian, uh, you want to start with your YouTube channel and kind of how you guys got together with the 616? Sure. So I have a small comic book YouTube channel similar to Steve's or Burke Family 54. And uh, we like to talk comic books. We have a couple weekly shows. We talk about top 10 back issues that aren't the hot 10. We'd like to talk about books that are on our own personal hunt list that we look for that still we think have value. We offer comic book market trends. We give you three up trends, three down trends. We have a, a weekly new comic book day show, which we call the Bolo Show. And then, of course, we wrap the week up with uh, a last call show, which is books that we like for 
final order cutoff books that are hitting final order cutoff the, the following Monday. And how, how did John and I become friends? Well, John started out as a Patreon supporter for some men's comics and we started talking. And at first it was just like, he, he was asking about getting into the variant game and we started working and partnering on some of those variants together. And then John just kind of took it and it's like, screw you guys, give me the ball and ran with it. And he's done a phenomenal job. He's got more projects than I could ever dream about or want, want to dream about, but he's killing it right now with those exclusive variants. So as you can see, most of those books now are on the 616 Comics. At this time, they're, they're solely being sold there. We still have a few left on Simple Man's Comics as well, but if you're looking for those exclusives, make sure you guys go to this 616comics.com. That's where John's selling them. We do do a job of promoting them as well, and we're always happy to do so because John's a fantastic guy. So I definitely stand behind him. Dude, what an intro hype man that Brian just was to hype. talk about your <laughs> online website. John, you want to go ahead and talk a little bit more about what people could see possibly in your uh, website before we get started? Yeah, sure. I mean, well, first, um, you know, thanks for, for having me on. I really appreciate it. And uh, thanks, Brian. Brian's helped me out tremendously. He's taught me so much uh, about comics, about the industry. We have, um, so what we have coming up is we're going to have a Black Weekend sale, not just a Black Friday sale. So, we're going to be offering uh, very deep discounts on our uh, our store exclusives, not on everything on the website, but we uh, we feel like uh, we can give the the biggest discounts on our own exclusives. So we want to go uh, as deep as possible with that. But um, but yeah, I just I do want to thank uh, Ryan for um, everything. We met uh, years ago online, still haven't met in person <laughs> yet. We. Um, we had a lot of discussions prior to doing anything together. And um, once we brought Jack in, the three of us worked great together and uh, we we're able to produce some really incredible books. I'm looking forward to discussing, um, you know, tonight, possibly how some of those came together. Dude, that is awesome. That is awesome. And John went ahead and made a coupon. Do you want to talk about that now or later? Yeah, no, sure. Uh, coupon will be good tonight uh, in honor of uh, Team No Sleeves. That's not the coupon code, but the coupon code is Burke 54 Burke 54 no space. And that's good for 25% off anything on the website, uh, the 616comics.com now through midnight tonight. So a couple hours flash sale in honor of uh, Steve's tattoo-less arms over there. <laughs> dude i don't have the ink man dude i'll tell you what but some of those tattoos are pretty freaking sick for sure it's all star wars all star wars stuff all star wars stuff dude. so mandalorian is just killing me right now just, i love that show my son who's 18 um so his experience is different than mine right like i started i literally the opening weekend may 1977 my dad when i was almost four years old took me to see star wars and no lie, I've been addicted ever since. Um, if the ink didn't tell the story, then, you know, my history with Star Wars tells the story. But I got to say also, you know, my, my son said, uh, and I feel the same way, this is the best Star Wars. It's just the best Star Wars. It reminds me so much of the original trilogy. Um, it pays respect to the prequels. Um, and I'm glad there's not much of the sequel trilogy at all. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so wasn't a big fan of that, but um, but yeah, man, Mando has just been phenomenal, phenomenal. I don't have a lot of time to watch TV anymore. Brian's always giving me good recommendations on text, and I feel bad because I, you know, I'm just crazy swamped with the business, and I love it. It's good. It's just my free time is at such a premium right now. Crazy, dude. I, I can't even imagine. I, I was gonna. We're gonna talk about how busy you are here. Shortly, for sure. So um, you talked a little bit about Star Wars as a kid. And I, I've talked to Brian a little bit about how he got into comic books. When did you first started like collecting comic books or reading them um, as a kid, John? 1982, man. I, I mentioned this on Brian's show once, but um, there was a 7-Eleven for those of you out there that know what a 7-Eleven is. I used to go to 7-Eleven. It's like a convenience store, like a Wawa, I guess. And um Used to go in there. There was a spinner rack. My dad would take me to the spinner rack, and I started figuring out like when the comics would show up. So then I would go bug the owner slash clerk, like, "Hey, I would show up on a certain day. Hey, I, I know these books came. Why haven't you put them out yet?" And he's like, "I'm stocking the candy rack, bud. Leave me alone." 
So I would bother him for that. And then I would I would bug him about the condition that they were in because even back then I was like incredibly uh, fastidious with the condition of the books. So, hey, thanks, Adrian. I appreciate that, brother. Um, so then like, you know, he would put them up and he would just like real haphazard, like dump them in the spinner rack. And I'm like, yo, like I'm going to buy that. And uh, he didn't understand like what was going on with it. But so I was in it for years, man. Mostly a Marvel guy, not too big of a DC guy. That changed later. Uh, I think Batman year one or year two really switched me over to DC for a little bit. But I love I love everything. I love indies. I love Marvel. Love DC. Um, so I stayed in it for a long time all throughout college. Then I dropped off and I, I went out to lunch years later with my brother, my younger brother, who I got into comics, my brother Mark. And he showed up at Panera Bread with a bunch of Batman comics. And I'm like, dude, what the hell am I going to do with these Batman books? <laughs> He's like, yo, you're supposed to read them. And I'm like, yeah, I know you doofus. Like, of course I'm supposed to read them. But you know I'm not in the comics anymore. He's like, no, I think you'll really like this. And uh, yeah, I jumped all the way back in uh, a couple years back. I found Brian's channel uh, came up on, on my uh, my YouTube feed and I became a Patreon member after a while. I would tweet at him and Jack like crazy and uh, just to talk. And, and I would always be surprised that Brian would get back to me. I'm like, oh, damn, man, this guy actually like he's he, he got right back to me. So became a Patreon, love the Bolo box. Um, big shout out for the Bolo box, you know. Um, yeah, but ever since then, we, we talked more and more and then went through a period of my life, which was a little uh, like transitional slash like uh, traumatic with my work situation. So I started talking to Brian to see if um, just to get his advice on see what I could do selling comic books because I really enjoyed it. And I still do. I love it. Absolutely love it. I love every part of it. Uh, I love talking with the customers. I love packaging the books. My children work with me. My wife works with me. My best friend Clint works with me. And um, yeah, I love every part of it. I mean, there's, you know, there's some troublesome customers, but for every one of those, I have 10 great ones. So I don't worry about that. I, I really enjoy it a lot. That's awesome. That's awesome. We had a lot of people commenting while you were talking from dust till dog says I fell in love with star Wars because of John. Uh, that's my wife. That is so cute, man. That just hits me in the feels. That's awesome. That's awesome. It's almost a deal breaker. I was like, have you ever seen star Wars? She's like, no. And I was like, Oh, Oh, right. <laughs> so we did it. I want to get your guys take real quick. I know this. Hey, put in episode one with George R. Binks. <laughs> Yeah, that, that was my next question. Like, how would you introduce someone to Star Wars? Would you start with episode four or would you go to one? Oh, man, I don't even know. New I, I would try the Mandalorian. <laughs> All right. That's a good That's a good idea now. We can start with Rogue One and then New Hope, but don't start with episode one. I didn't. I went in the order that I went in. So I, I started okay. with four, four, five, six, one, two, three. There you go. There you yeah. go. Shout out real quick to Kidrano Prince. For joining the Burke family channel membership. That's what's up. He joined as a family member tier as well. So I appreciate that. I'm going to add your name to the description of all my videos and you'll be entered to end the uh, Burke box, the monthly Burke box, as well as a few other things as well. Thank you for joining, Kadrano Prince. I really appreciate that. Awesome. Uh, I got my you. coffee cup just for you, John. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Dude, I'll tell you what. I was You guys talked about the Bolo box and I watched Andy open his today and there was some awesome simple man's and the 616 comics exclusives in there including that nice really awesome megan hutchison um department of truth number one variant yeah so john's got a bolo box and i feel bad because half the books coming to him are his, his books. <laughs> <laughs> i was like hey man um i don't know what to do because like, i'm trying to like and then packing them up so the bolo box is, is patreon tier of, of ours Right. So um, it's not really a subscription box. It's basically the $35 tier for patrons, the higher tier. And as the reward for that, we send the Bolo box out. The Bolo box in itself, though, is more than value than you can. It's got four exclusives in it. If not, it's got three exclusives in, in, in the regular cover. But it, we're, now we're getting four exclusives in that box. Um, a lot of them are coming from John at the 616. We also get some from Frankie's Comics. We have Black Cape Comics um, contributing some now to that as well. So shout out to Black Cape Comics. But thirty-five dollars. I mean, you're getting four exclusives, and and 
we limit it to 50 just so we can keep the quality of those boxes high. People are asking, well, why don't you open up for one more? And we always talk about integrity on the channel. The thing is, is I have friends saying, can you open it up one more spot? And I was like, I can't do that because if I do it for you, I have to do it for, you know, the other people right. that have just for one more. Now there is natural attrition, whether it's people that like don't like the box at one point and fall off or, you know, everyone knows these times we have some hardships. So there's some money that comes, but you know, they fall off. I just tell them to keep looking at Patreon and the spots open. So we just had one person, a new member join this past week. Another person, one of the people that asked me, uh, they joined a couple weeks ago because the spot opened up. So it's 50. It, we have it at 50 spots so we can keep the quality of the box as high as, as possible. And like I said, $35 for four exclusives. What basic retail is minimum, probably $14. So, and it's, it's packed randomly. It's not like, oh, we're, you know, we're loading people's boxes. That's why, unfortunately, John gets some of his own books just because when I pack them up, I just pack them all up and then bring them into the room and mail and print out shipping labels and just put them on top of it. So that way it's totally randomly packed. I will say at some point, um, Jack, who's also on the channel with me, he's starting to get his Shopify set up. So we'll have, I don't know if they're going to be called Bolo boxes, but something similar that are going to be listed up there at some point for people that are looking for boxes like that. But I will tell you, they will be higher than the $35 for the Patreon. I was gonna say I, when he was opening his box today, I went back like I didn't catch it live, but I watched the the uh, the rewind later, and I was like, "Holy cow!" I would give a lot more than thirty five dollars for the box that he opened. He had the uh, Megan Hutchinson Department of Truth number one, and he had that Seven Secrets number one second print, and there was I can't remember the other two. I know one of them was that Death Metal three Frankies, and I can't remember the the fourth book, but. It was yeah, probably two Frankies and two six one six simple mans. Yep, sounds right. Sounds right. Uh, I I will agree with where, where is it? I will agree. I actually prefer the prequels to the original trilogy. Uh, I tried to go back. That's a generation gap. I'm just kidding. Yeah. That's a generational thing. That's exactly what I just said, Brian. <clears throat> That's cool, man. Listen, any Star Wars love it, it, it is all good. You know what I mean? It's all good. Um, I mean, if you like the last movie, there's something wrong with you. But outside of that. Everything's all good. If you like, I have not seen. I didn't see the last movie because I was a little oh. distraught after the one before that. Don't bother. Don't bother. I, I think the standalone movies don't get as much love as they should. I think Solo and Rogue One were fantastic. I thought they were great. Yep, absolutely. Steve, this is now a Star Wars channel, brother. Yeah, this sorry. is now a Star Wars channel. <laughs> Adrian wants me to highlight his comment from earlier. Okay, his comment from earlier. I What's like how he called you out on that. Did he really? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, oh, wait. Well, here we go. Man. Well, you got a lifelong, lifetime customer for and fan with me, John. Thanks for being nice. amazing with the six one six and having great customer service and amazing exclusives. I do agree with that. John is really awesome to work with, and to not just like like his customer service is unmatched for sure. Like I had someone reach out to me about something with one of the books, and John took care of it in like five seconds, which was amazing. And, I'm, always here. <laughs> okay. I'm always here. <laughs> <laughs> and I just appreciate you doing that so quickly. And also like, he's just awesome to talk to about things other than just comic books as well. Uh, it is a best box yeah. in a way, for sure. For sure. Mandalorian all day. I started doing a live stream where I just like what, like I have it playing while I'm watching it and it's doing okay, but I just enjoy watching the Mandalorian and I, I'm not it's a big Star Wars guy. It's They're good. Just good when you watch them a second time. Just as good. Just as good. Just yeah. Good. Oh, I had the last, Last one was only like 30 minutes long. What the heck? I know. I know. Oh, real quick, Adrian, too, man. Um, I put a little surprise, a little extra surprise in the last thing I sent you. So, so the, the reason why I uh, – <laughs> that's awesome. That's mm -hmm. awesome. The reason why I asked if you could split that order is because it's his birthday this week. And so – Oh, yeah. Uh, that's, the one I, that's the one I put some uh, – November birthdays rule. These <laughs> November birthdays do rule, man. Mine was last week, and I appreciate John for being able to split that order. That's awesome. Yeah, no worries, man. There we go. There we go. Okay. All right. So when did the 616 Comics start? And also, who are some of your favorite cover artists that you've worked with so far? Uh, well, I'll go in reverse. So uh, Megan Hutchison, by far, hands down. Uh, Hal Laren is a close second, I would say. Um, I don't know. They're probably tied now that I think of it. But I think because we've worked with both of them so much, um, Megan's just Megan's just awesome to work with. I feel like I have so much in common with her, you know, when we talk. 
<clears throat> and um, I mentioned the other day, I, I put it up online somewhere that uh, Donny Cates did the wall tags for our homesick pilots number one, which just came out the other day our, our, on presale. And those tags were, it's just awesome to be able to, to work with someone that has um, just such incredible talent and in her family, right? Her husband is the hottest writer in comics. And I didn't know he was going to pop in on that book and just throw some tags and put his initials on the cover. Like that, that was incredible. But um, we're working with her right now on an image book called Ha Ha. Uh, we came up with a concept for that. Uh, I talked with my wife about it and we pitched it to Megan and she wanted to do it. It's a book about clowns. Uh, I read issue one, comes out in January. And um, I'm so excited. It's going to be a really dark. Isn't that uh, a spinoff like the Ice Cream Man clown or something? Or? Yeah, it's uh, W. Maxwell Prince, the writer. This is his um, This is his like anthology series about troubled clowns. Issue one was really cool, really cool. And I wanted to do a cover that is very disturbing and makes you feel like uh, a little unsettled when you look at it. So I'm not going to talk about what the concept is, but you're going to know it when you see it. And it's pretty, uh, pretty freaky, pretty creepy. But the thing I like about Megan is I pitched these concepts to her and she's like, yup, love it. Let's do it. And I'm like, all right, well, let me know if you, if you can, because some of the covers are her ideas. Um, and, and some come, come from our side, but, uh, yeah, I love working with her. Hal's great. I, I probably zoom with Hal several times a week. Um, he's over in Britain, so we got we got to account for the time uh, transition and stuff like that. But I think Hal is incredibly underrated, as is Megan. And got to give Jack a lot of credit, um, Mr. Bolo. He he brought up the idea when we were, you know, we had a million different Zoom calls between Brian, Jack, and I in the beginning. And as we went through, and and it was Jack's idea to work with Megan. And what a grand slam idea that was. I don't know if I ever would have thought about that or not. He just uh, commented about how, how amazing it is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she, she, it's just incredible. And exactly what Jack said, like to get, to tap into that like creative hive mind of Donnie, because the crossover, I don't know if anyone knows this or not, that crossover cover was Donnie's idea. That wasn't my or Jack's or Brian's or Megan's. That was Donnie's idea from, from what I understand from what Megan told me. This one right here? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Donnie wanted to do a, an homage of that classic X-Men Days of Future Past uh, cover. And uh, she's like, hey, what do you think about this? I only did one sketch because it's Donnie's book and he wants to do this cover. And I was like, sure, because she normally will give us three concepts and then we pick and then we discuss. Um, but she gave one for that. And she's like, listen, it's Donnie's book. This is what he wants to do. This is what we're going to do. I was like, hey, I'm not arguing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> let's do this cover we're going to do that cover so um but yeah like to tap into that creative um family unit i want to call it now that they're married and stuff man you can't beat that and her she's so underrated she's just so underrated he's got range he's got serious not so much longer <laughs> i know i mean she's and every book that we come out with of hers sells out I, i'm shocked actually we still have homesick pilots covers and I think that cover is going to hit. I mean, if you watch Brian and Jack's show, um, what was that, Brian, the last call show? You guys highlighted that cover? Like a yeah, week ago? Yeah, that last call show. First of all, if you're not watching the last call, um, something's wrong with you. You got to get on watching that show. It's the it's the OG last call show. And it's the best last call show. So you got to get on watching that if you don't already. Um, but that Homesick Pilots, that's going to hit. I read the first three issues. That book rocks, man. I love that book. Um, nice. A killer story. Great art. Um, absolutely love the art. Uh, it's Casper Wingard, I think, is is the artist's name on that. Um, but, yeah, I would say I, I absolutely love working with Hal. love working with Megan. John Boy Myers has been great. Um, he just came out with that erratic cover. We sold out a cover mm -hmm. on that super fast. Um, we still have cover A left. And, you know, that's that's the kind of thing that we want to do. And, and Jack and, and Brian and I used to talk about this all the time. Um, we want to be where other variant producers are not. Are we going to be on titles that other people are on? Sure. All the time that's going to happen. But like with Erratic, we were able to get the only exclusive variant on the planet for that book. 
Um, so we're, we're constantly trying to look for opportunities to get on projects that other people might overlook. Um, and we have a couple of those coming up. Nice. Um, I can't really talk about, but, but yeah. Excited. That's awesome. I had a, we had a question here from Adrian. How do you select the artists you work with on exclusives and how do you get connected with them? Sure. Do you want to talk about that, Brian? You want me to jump in on that? I'll, I'll throw a little bit in there how we started and then you can add. add um, so it all, I think it also differs by publisher. You know, with, with Boom, it's, it's different than IDW, than, than Image and Dynamite. Um, Boom, we had calls and we, we just kind of gave some artists and Boom will reach out for the artists on your on your behalf. They like to do the editor team where I believe Image and IDW and Dynamite, you go and seek out your own artists and you, you cover your artist cover artist fees separately and where boom likes to handle everything for you and you pay everything through boom now the easiest way it seems to be that john's done most of the reaching out and contacting and some of the best ways to do it whether you believe it or not is dm them on instagram right john yeah that's how i that's how i got with um with hal i saw hal's art on instagram and messaged him i've been i've messaged a bunch of artists on instagram and strangely enough um some artists that are just phenomenal, I mean, just knocking it out of the park, I'll DM them and I'll say, hey, have you ever done an exclusive? And they'll say, no. Uh, are you interested in that? Uh, because it looks like you're just drawing superheroes constantly at a really high level. So do you want to break into this industry? Yeah, I do. All right. Would you be interested in this cover or that cover? Or like, what are you looking at, at doing? I'll pitch them a project or a concept. Um, sometimes I'll just say, hey, I'd just like to get you on a cover. I'll let you do what you want. And they like blow me off. And I'm like, what was that all about? I don't understand what just happened there. And so I'll check back in with them. And um, I don't know. I don't know. But I give them a chance. I'm like trying to give them money and exposure. And I, I just don't know. But some of them like Hal. Hal got right back to me. Hal Laren. And he was like, uh, yeah, sure, mate. You want to Zoom? Because he's from, he's from Britain. So they say mate, I guess, over right. there. So he's like, sure, mate, you want to Zoom? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, are you free right now? I was like, dude, I just DM'd you like five seconds ago. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, <what laughs> right. Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. Yeah. I was like, hey, hey, guys, uh, I got this guy, Hal. You want to check out his Instagram? And, and then we were like, yeah, man, let's let's rock and roll with this guy. So I think the first the first cover we did with him was Villainous, number one. Uh, yeah, it which was like the first cover, but it was like one of the later books to come out. I do want to add also those bigger artists or artists that there's some artists out there that have agents or reps mm -hmm. that are a little bit more difficult to work through because you also got to go through their reps to get covers. Mm -hmm. that the DM isn't going to work through that way. And we we found that out as well, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, it's it's been uh it's been a crazy process, but yeah, I I'll just I go straight at people. That's always been my uh that's always been my MO. That's how I got married to my wife. I just kept, kept going at her. That's how I met Brian. I was just relentless on Twitter and uh, <laughs> on, on direct message. But yeah, I mean, I find that to be the best way. Say, hey, I mean, you know, if, if you want to see what we do, check out the website. Here's what we have going on. Here's the artists we work with. Um, but yeah, I haven't really, um, Catherine Odette's been great to work with. Uh, she has a Vampirella the Dark Powers number one set coming up for us. Uh, that, that was also Jack's idea to reach out to her. And she kind of took a break for a little bit, but she's a phenomenal artist. Absolutely phenomenal artist. So I can't wait to show everybody this Vampirella cover. I'm just I'm trying to work through some issues right now with ordering and the publisher and all that. And then we'll reveal that covers real soon. I just the artist one's been to sit on is those Berserker covers. Dude, there we go. There we go, Austin. That's what's up, man. Boom. And he's a big Star Wars guy too. Nice, nice. Huge star like he has a stormtrooper like thing that he paid like twelve hundred bucks for in his room. <laughs> Huge oh, Star Wars fan. So John, can you explain how the business got started? I think it can help inspire people, especially during a time. Sorry, uh Brian, yeah. I didn't mean to cut you off there. I just want to make sure I highlighted that comment. I'm just here so I don't get fined. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so the business, um, I mean, I, I reached out to Brian before I even started the business to see if I should even do it. <clears throat> and uh, 
you know, I got to say, Brian, Brian was uh, inspirational. I mean, he gave me a lot of confidence to, to keep going because I was just like selling books like on the side initially. And I was like, I really want to do this in a bigger way. What should I do? He's like, you got to do this. You got to do that. You got to get this set up. You got to get that set up. And I was like, oh, oh, OK. And I was like, all right, well, what type of printer do I need? Like Brian gave me advice all the way down to like the minutia of, of the business. So and it, it, it helped out tremendously. But I was having uh, I can't get I can't really get into this too much, but I had troubles in my work situation. I work for the government <clears throat> and uh, that's kind of all I can say. <laughs> I can't, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not really allowed to talk about it. Uh, I could get, yeah, really in trouble for talking about what happened to me uh, as I can't even say what I am. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, it just sucks not being able to talk about it. Once everything's over, I'll be able to talk about it. So I was afraid of getting fired. And I was like, I need um, a secondary source of income. Now, my wife and I own a dog training business, but she runs that, you know, 99% of the time, I'm mostly behind the scenes. I used to train as well. Um, then some work stuff happened, and then I started selling the comics. So I, I, I really did it as like a backup plan, like almost like a plan B. And then I started rolling. I remember asking my wife one night, I was like, hey, I'm going to take a couple thousand dollars, um, and I want to buy some books and see if if I can sell them. And if this works, you know, we're going we're gonna to keep going with it, and maybe I can make something out of this in case something happens to me at work. And then that was right around the time I was talking to Brian and um, made some really good moves. And I was like, we need to start like a legitimate LLC. We need to do a company. And that's what happened. And Brian helped me through a lot of that. And pretty shortly after that, I was like, hey, let's do some variants together. And Brian was like, um, all right, let's talk about it. So some of the projects we talked about initially were you know, really small in scope. And then we brought Jack in <clears throat> and I just felt so confident in our team that we really stepped on the gas and haven't looked back since. And we're just cranking now. I actually need to pull back a little bit because I feel like it's, it's a little, it's a little too much. You know what I mean? When I go, when I go a day without getting back to a customer, I feel horrible. I just feel horrible. Whereas I used to be able to get back to people within like the hour. Right. That's than possible right now. <clears throat> so I want to get back to to that a little bit more. I mean, for a little bit there recently, we were thinking about getting like like a like a big warehouse space and stuff like that. But I feel like I'm going to start to lose touch with with our customers and and really that one on one that I really like. He was going to dance in it with the wife beater on like Kevin Bacon in Footloose. Oh, yeah, such a good movie. <laughs> yeah. Brian is still living in the 80s. Man. I love the 80s, man. I, I admire that. I admire that. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. But yeah, I mean, it just it took off. My wife has been incredibly supportive with, with everything. I mean, she helped me with, with the business. We brought, like I said earlier, uh, brought we have, uh, have four kids, and th they all work. They all help out. And uh, I've, I've seen, I've seen the 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 stack pile of. The chains, all, everything, like the aftermath of all these boxes and chains really? on the ankles. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, oh my yeah. gosh, I can't even imagine. Yeah, I mean, we just we have thousands of books rolling in every week, and I and I and I try to tell people because I even got a message today from someone that said, you know, your, I think your company's like way too big, and I'm like, uh, I don't think you understand. <laughs> We're not that big. We're a little family-run business. That's all we are, and right. we. We work our asses off, so it might seem like we got more going on than, than we do. But you know, when you're getting your box, your orders being fulfilled by me, my wife, and one of my children. Now, having said that, my children, it's been drilled into them uh, about condition, about packaging, and all that. So I don't want people to think they're getting books that are like kids are sending them. Um, my kids are older, and everyone uh, everyone knows how to package. I'm right over their shoulders for hours, making sure, nope, too much pressure, not enough tape. A clipboard. Put the bag on it. Like, Dick oh. for bean. <laughs> I wrote them out a list of, hey, here's the procedure, follow it. And it was a 10-step procedure for packaging and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. It is all about that hustle. That's awesome. Yeah, we we hustle. We hustle, man. So, And and we love it. And And our whole goal is to bring people the same joy that I got as a kid at the spinner rack. 
right? Because it's so disappointing. Like, Steve, you, you sent me a picture of a guy that ordered um, this cover off our yeah. website. Mm -hmm. And something must have happened in shipping, and it had a couple spine ticks on it. And I just sent, a, I sent him a replacement copy. Uh, it mm -hmm. already went out, actually. That was yesterday. Because I, I don't want people to be disappointed. When they get a book, it's not in good condition. Um, I don't. I know other retailers um, that look at that as like a hassle. I look at it as I have an opportunity to make it right. You know, I have an opportunity to get this this guy or gal a book in good condition. As long as I have it in, in stock, um, I'll send it right back out. But because there's nothing worse than getting a comic in the mail and it's jacked up, right? Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't want that for for our customers. So, so yeah. I don't know. I don't know how that started, but yeah. <laughs> Someone said this. Uh, here, let me pull this up. Diamond needs that ten step for power. Uh, they they do. I don't even know if I should go into it. Brian Brian has been on the receiving end of my diamond rants. We used to call him Tuesday John. <laughs> yeah, because that's when this diamond order would come in, and like <laughs> that's when all the the venting texts would come to the phone, and yeah. like during the week it was like. Uh, uh, not that he's not, not that he's a pessimist, but all the other days is very optimistic. And then yeah. that's like, hey, everything's going good. I was like, well, we haven't heard from Tuesday, John, yet. And then next thing you know, <laughs> F and Diamond. And then they send pictures. Yeah. yeah, Diamond Diamond has a QA issue and a shipping issue. They still, and, do. Uh, they still do. A lot of issues. <laughs> yeah. Now, I will say there, there's some great people I've talked to in Diamond. Uh, there's great people that work there for sure. But <clears throat> their packaging game needs to be stepped up. It like really I'm, not, I'm not with UCS anymore, but I was with UCS. Uh, now everybody has to go to Lunar for uh, DC stuff. But I'll tell you, the damages on UCS packaging compared to Diamond, not even close. UCS was phenomenal. I know other retailers have had some issues and stuff, but UCS was great to deal with, uh, really great on packaging. Uh, Diamond, man. Wow, it's hard. And I even go to the UPS terminal. I, I, I don't even have them deliver it to my house because I want less, the less hands on our boxes, the better. So my wife and I, we, you know, we'll be going tomorrow morning. We wake up early, we drive to the UPS terminal, we get our books um, because other retailers told me that that will help cut down on damages. It hasn't, but um, supposedly it, it, it will. So that's what we're hoping for. So I'm getting people messaging me about the coupon kit. So that's great. Oh, yeah. uh, I do think, where is it? I do think that is m most retailers because I've heard from LCS about <laughs> all of their books that have been damaged before too. And they don't, from what I understand it, I mean, it's a whole nother thing, but some of them, like a lot of times they don't even like reimburse you or send you like replacement copies. So that sucks. It depends. Like uh, we, we had a big problem with our TMNT 110. Uh, the one in 10 Bates variant, which caught fire, like we sold out. And so just so everybody knows, like we, we, we do like hold back. So we ordered 225 of those. I maybe put half of that up for sale, sold through all of them. Right. So sold a hundred and some copies pre-sold. Uh, and then none of them came in zero. I mean, none, nothing came in. So diamond audited out our order because they did not include the 2,250 exclusives that Brian and Jack and I ordered. So then we had people accusing us of like getting the order, but sitting on the books or something like that. And I'm like, I'll show you my diamond invoice. We didn't have any. So talk to IDW. We talked to diamond and they said, we'll ship you 51. And I'm like, what about the other, you know, 175? They said, we're out. We, we, you know, it was our mistake. We can't give you any. And this was a red hot book. It still is, right? Because right. it had Ronin preview in the back. Mm -hmm. So um, they shipped us to 51. And then uh, the 51 comics that got shipped to us, the box was dropped by somebody on its side. And because their packaging is non existent, there's no buffer, there's no cushion. All 51 were damaged. Oh my gosh. So now, hundreds of people again and say, uh, we got 51 copies, but they're all jacked up. And then people were like, and I, I was like, I'll send you the pictures. And people were like, yes, yeah, send me the pictures. Because, and I, I did want to bring this up. I don't blame people for like not believing me. However, 
once I send you a picture of a stack of 51 books all damaged, I don't know what else I can do. I'll show you my diamond invoice. It'll show you it zeroed out. It'll, it, it'll, I'll show you. Just the put a cup of coffee on. Come on over. I'll take you down in the basement and show you. Yeah, I don't know what else I can do. But I do think I do think customers have like retailer PTSD. I've learned that like uh, customers definitely have retailer PTSD. They, in the past, they've dealt with retailers that um, don't care, don't give a crap about them. Uh, and I just want people to know that that's that's not me. Uh, that is not me. That's Brian will be able to tell you this. Jack will be able to tell you this. Um, I care. I, I mean, I care about our customers a lot. And uh, because I always put myself in that position. So I'm, I'm never trying to gaslight anybody or lie. I mean, if, if something happens, I think most experienced uh, consumers know this is just the industry. You know, Honesty the industry, is always the best way to go. Yeah, yeah. sure. Like, you know, you're not always going to get what you ordered. That just happened this week. As we were just talking about before we went live. Ordered a thousand copies of something and got 500. And it was like, whoops. And I'm like, uh-oh. Talk to the publisher. They're like, uh. <laughs> oh, man. That's right. Yeah. We're, yeah, I remember what we were talking about. Yeah. But, uh, you know, having said that, I mean, again, these are these are mistakes that are made largely in computer systems. No one's intentionally trying to screw over Brian or me or Jack. Right. These are just mistakes. Um, and the problem is when you produce an exclusive variant, there's so many steps in the process that if 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 one if one step gets messed up, it throws everything off the rails. Yeah, Sometimes I'd like to add to that also because before being involved on the retailer side of selling exclusive brands, you're obviously on the collector side. Sometimes you're on the speculator side, and there'd be someone that would list an exclusive. And they would say, hey, it's a Marvel exclusive and only a thousand copies are available. The collector right. side of you is like, that's bullshit. I know it's a minimum of 3,000. After going through all this experience, I completely understand why now retailers will say we only have it. I would say there's 3,000, but we're only selling a thousand. It's going to create its own controversy in itself. But mm -hmm. I completely understand why they don't sell them all because of all the stuff that has gone through with damaged copies, missing copies, waiting reprints, still waiting reprints, or, Hey, sorry, you're SOL, but we don't have any for you. You yep. kind of, as a retailer covering your ass that way by just putting a certain amount up. And that definitely changed my viewpoint on why retailers do some of that now. Right. And that, that's a huge, um, I just had a long discussion with another retailer the other day about this. Um, you know, is, is it better to print, you know, to just overprint and then just destroy the rest if you get a good shipment? Because I'll be honest, like we've gotten a lot of shipments recently. Anybody that follows Simple Man's or 616 is going to know, um, we're cranking them out. And that, that was, that was designed that way on purpose. Um, it was really me and Jack. I mean, Brian, Brian was like, yeah, you guys want to go crazy with the variants, go crazy. And then, uh, and then we did. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. So, you know, I, 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 like Brian says, I do understand people overprinting, but he, you know, it, it's it's a double edged sword because I would say, and and this might shock people, but I would say maybe one third of the variant projects we've had came in correct, right? So, would you say that's right, Brian? Yeah, and it's weird because like it'd be almost like a. It, uh, every other sometimes from certain publishers and um, like one would be messed up, but then you get the next one and it'd be like you would say, you do your QA check and it'd be like, oh, we only had like 15 damaged. Yeah. I mean, I, I yeah, it's just, it's just incredible. It's just absolutely incredible to me. Like, and you don't know that as a, you know, at, on the other side, as a consumer, you don't know all the all the stuff that goes into getting these out the door in good condition all the odds are against you with this from the publisher to the printer to the delivery uh to the people processing the order it's definitely uh, not treated like a collectible through the process not at all and that, that i think that's the problem but i i would say one third of our projects came in acceptable to really good condition um and came in in the, in the right numbers. Like I, I received a, I received a shipment the other day, and I got fifty out of two hundred and fifty books that we ordered, and that was it. And then I, and then I said, well, what happened to the other two hundred? And uh, 
It took two weeks to figure out what happened to the other 200. And then the publisher told me, FedEx destroyed your second box. And I said, what does that even mean? They said, FedEx destroyed it. And I said, but I bought, I bought those books. And they said, well, they damaged it so bad, they destroyed it. And I said, what does that mean? They lit it on fire? They right. threw it in the furnace? Like, what? They destroyed our FedEx books. set up a newsstand. <laughs> what does that mean? And then I said, hey, can, can you, uh, well, can you reprint the other 200? And they said, no. And I was like, well, now what am I supposed to do? I don't understand what I'm supposed to do now. Like, there's nobody to, to tell you. So I, I talked to Brian about it. And I was like, like, what, what am I supposed to do? Drive to the publisher and like bang on the door? Uh, I, I don't know. So basically I begged them. I, I called them up and I said, hey, I'll, I'll buy you filet mignon. I'll do whatever. I even offered to pay for part of the new reprints just to get them. I said, I, I don't have them. I have customers that need them. Uh, this has been going on for you know a couple months, and so I think that's the stuff that I never would have known would happen going into it. That's just craziness sometimes. Wow, yeah. very laissez-faire sometimes. It's like meh. Yeah, and I'm like, yo, this is my life. Like I know you're a huge publishing company, and I'm a little baby, you know, family business over here, but I'm st I'm still a customer. Like, what what's going on here? So. Yeah, I don't know. It's crazy. It's really crazy. You got some comments that I wanted to uh, highlight real quick, and then I got a few more questions for you guys. Sure. Uh, okay. We appreciate hearing from retailers like this. You will gain a loyal following, being so transparent and having such great prices. I was able to find variants at the 616 that I didn't find other places. Oh. Nice. Very nice. Uh, things happen. I only get mad when certain retailers say, hey, look what I found in the basement. You guys keep it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you know, like Ryan said, I understand, I understand, you know, two and well, it's also one thing if they find it in the basement, but if they find them and they sell them, I think that you know, sell it for yeah. you as the retailer, sell it for the price. Don't you know, hey, look um, what I found in the basement. Now you're selling that second secondary market right. level. You can't do that. No, you can't do that. So um, you know, so like our process, um, you know, just to, to be more transparent, um, what I learned pretty quickly is, you know, if you print 500, do not sell 500, right? <clears throat> you have to hold some back. And when I have people messaging me, like people were messaging me like crazy for the ice cream man variant. Uh, oh yeah. 21. Hey, do you have any more? And I'm very, I'm very upfront about it. I have to wait till the shipment comes in. We sold through most of them. Yeah. But I might have some more to offer. And then when I do put them up, I, I'm going to put up, put it up, you know, maybe as i have sending some to CGC Maybe we'll put a couple up, but they're definitely going to still be for cover price. And I'll announce it ahead of time. I'm not just going to pop them on the website. I'll announce it ahead of time that, hey, we're going to have 20 copies for sale. But, you know, th those aren't going to be found in the basement. Those are based on what we just talked about, you know, um, holdbacks because of damages. What I found out is, you know, I I've been holding back about 20 percent of the print run. Um, that might not be enough going forward because a lot of times I can't get. I can't get replacement copies sometimes. They just won't reprint, you know, smaller amounts, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's I do want to announce that ahead of time that that we might we might put some up later. It just depends, depends on condition and stuff. Do you have any valiant exclusives coming up? Yes. Uh, what should I say about this? All right, so I've been wanting to work with Megan Hetrick probably since the beginning of when we started this. So Megan is going to be on Exo Man of War number four for us. No one knows this except I think Brian. <laughs> Exo Man of War number four. Um, I gave, give Jack a shout out. Jack's the one that was like, yo, you got to get with Valiant. I was like, all right. So we're going to do Exo Man of War number four with Megan Hetrick. Um, it's going to be an awesome tribute cover. And uh, yeah, it's probably all I'll say right about now. Um, <laughs> I want to ask you about really quickly because you, you you've mentioned a lot of times about like homage covers or like you know giving them ideas or they send out certain things. Like I, I know that for certain issues, Brian and Jack have come up with covers, and you came up with your own idea. How does that process work, or do you guys sometimes just let like the artists pick their own cover? You want you want to talk about that, Brian? Yeah, I mean. 
now mostly most of the covers is, uh, is all John. That's for sure. John's John's taking it and run with it, and we're I'm, we're good with that. But when we first started, yeah. a lot of it was discussions of um, artists. We'd come up with artists, and we'd trickle it down to a choice artist. Like I said, Boom was different because you give them a list of eight artists, and you get yeah. none of them. But um, some of the other ones, like you, once you got the artist nailed down, and like you said, you would get a, usually a choice of three sketches, and then it was basically us through Facebook Messenger. You know, talking about why we liked it, why we didn't like it, and then we also had a weekly Zoom meeting with the three of us, where whatever didn't get hashed out in Facebook Messenger, we would we would sit there and discuss and come up with, and and basically decide on a consensus of which cover we liked and why. But then it was time. I mean, the answer to your question, Steve, was yes, because there was times where it's like, well, let the artist decide. But I mean. It's it's a there's no direct answer for each cover. It's just kind of a different process for whatever worked, and most of the time it was always consensus, and everyone was happy with what the final output was. Yeah, now I'll say for for our dragon covers, right? So we had the Steve Morris number one, mm -hmm. uh, the Hal Laren. It's my favorite. It's my favorite one. It's my favorite too. So good, right? Oh my oh my God. God. It, it looks so good. good. It looks so oh, yeah. good. That one right there. Yeah, I got my little my little you know <laughs> slayer with it in the same pose, you know, because right. awesome. Yeah, and, and this is our Steve Morris number three. So these were all artists. Uh, the artist, this was all artist concept. Um, I will say for number three, this this cover got a little fakakta. I'm throwing some Italian out there, not really, but um, this cover was supposed to be John Boy Myers. Mm -hmm. um, so sad to this day that it wasn't. There was um there was a real communication issue with that uh, issue. Um, we were going to have this guy solo on the cover, right? That guy right there. He was going to be solo on the cover. Um, and it, yeah, it didn't happen. I can't, I'm not allowed to say really exactly what happened there, but um, we ended up with that cover. It's the shattered cover. I love it. Like Steve Morris killed it with that cover. It's the only cover featuring that new team, the shattered, which was yeah. in that issue. I love the colors on that cover. So, I mean, I'm absolutely thrilled with how that came out. I'm just sad because I know there's another cover that's finished. That's that I love that. I wish we could do. Um, so, so that was all artist based stuff like this. This was Jack's idea, right? This is, this is probably my favorite turtles cover. We'll be shipping these out really soon. We had a little bit of an issue with, with uh, some stuff with this. So this is almost ready to go out. This is the Marvel TMNT 111 Marvel 25th homage. Um, that was all Jack's idea. Um, amazing, amazing, amazing. It's one of my favorites. Um, yeah, so I mean, some of the ideas were Jack's, some were mine, um, some the three of us collaborated on, and then others were the artists. It really depends on the project itself. Um, and then one of our covers is Donnie Kate's idea, which I just think is amazing to be a part of something like that. <laughs> That is so cool, man. That's yeah. Cool. I mean, it depends. Like, sometimes we'll be able to get, um, like, a preview issue from the publisher, and then we'll read it, and we, we'll discuss, hey, we like to try to recreate a certain scene but put a different type of spin on it. Um, other times we'll just roll with a concept. You know, like this cover, this could have been on any TMNT cover. You know what I mean? So this was a great concept that Jack had that we could put up, excuse me, on really any TMNT issue. Uh, the 112, the girl power, that was Jack's idea, oh. uh, where it's an homage to the number one. Um, that red scale is so cool. Oh, man, it, it came out great, right? So from, from concept to delivery by Hal, man, just another home run, absolute home run. I, I will say I talked to IDW um, three hours ago now on the phone, and I asked them because um, their exclusive program is on hold right now they're going through a little bit of a transition so i tried to get in on a bunch of different projects and and um they're not accepting exclusives right now so wow we had a tremendous last run in number two that got shot down oh, wow. Is it it, it, me? yeah it, the oh, dark man, the dark night one that thing was incredible yeah it was the last run in on like a telephone telephone wire you know um in the rain and then with the lightning behind them, it just, I sent that to Brian too, because I thought that was a done deal. And then, and then they shot it down because they said, we're not doing homage covers 
Um, and then and then I talked to a friend of mine who did an homage to uh, for the same issue to Spider Man number one, and it made it through. And I was like, "Yo, man, why they give you the homage and they shot mine down?" They said mine got shot down because it was an homage, but you got your homage. So, what? yeah, I mean, maybe it was just the Batman thing. Um, hey, what's going on? Hey, he, hey, he super chatted, right? He, he super chatted me. Yeah, that's what's up. Hey, I tried to super chat and it said I wasn't allowed to because I don't know. Your credit's no good. <laughs> I was trying, I wanted to be the first guest on your show to super chat while I was on the show. Oh, that would have been cool. You've already super chatted me so many times. Though. I appreciate that, John. I really do. But, um, but yeah, like the, the, the best of, I wanted to say the funnest, right? That's not a word, but the funnest part of, of the whole thing is working with other people to come up with the concept and, um, you know, bouncing stuff off of Brian or the artist, like that's the best part of, of the whole thing. Like there's shipping woes, there's publishing woes and all that. But the best part is, you know, and Jack has said it before, being a part of the creative process, like in no other like area of life can you jump in. You can't like go call a play for the Eagles or I guess the right. Reds, if, if it's Brian watching TV, you can't jump, you can't like, go call a play for the Eagles. But, but in the comic game, you can do that. You can get on the field, so to speak, and you can actually be a part of the process. So that is incredibly fun. And um, I would also say that, you know, meeting guys like Brian and, and like you, Steve, like, uh, and Jack, I mean, it's just been that the best part of the business has been meeting other people in the industry um, and getting to know them. For sure. And, and you guys have helped hook me up with Boom! I get the books for like uh, er, advanced copies early, which is really awesome to be able to like read those and then do spoiler-free reviews on my channel. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, Comic burrito, how's it going, man? How's it going? Uh, I got like a few more questions, and I I know we've already been on for almost an hour, and I appreciate you guys for joining me. I'm gonna try not to take up too much of your guys' time. Uh, right. I just have a couple more questions. Um, let's see here. How many orders would you say that you're your little business puts out weekly with a rough estimate <clears throat> number of orders. Yeah. I, I just did the math on this earlier. Um, anywhere between depending on the week, th three to 500 a week, um, which is a lot. Cause it's, you know, there's a handful of us here and, right. and I'm the only full-time one. So yeah, it's a lot. Like there's no, like no lie. I've, I've, I've chatted Brian up late, late at night, you know, I've gone well past midnight some nights uh, today. You I, reply with two words. Yeah. Yeah. F variants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This sounds like something Brian would say. That is what Brian says. Yeah. yeah. Using my reply to F variants. <laughs> yeah. Brian, I, I feel bad. Brian, poor Brian, man. Jeez. I've hit him with so many. You know, because who else am I going to talk to after a no, while? I don't mind. I'm usually just venting it first. Yeah, definitely. Like I, like I, I do reach out to Brian usually first when I have an issue. I'm like, "Yo, man, you believe the shit that happened with this or it happened with that?" And he, that, that's his reply. F varies. <laughs> well, usually, I'm venting for him because I like, man, I, like I knew if I was in that situation, I, I would just be highly frustrated. Will you have any more last Ronin Jabroni tribute covers come back in stock? Uh, CGC. Yeah. We're going to have a couple CGC. We had, we had some damages, uh, on that and I didn't get fully, you know, I didn't get filled all the way back in by IDW. Unfortunately, there it is. Yeah. There it yeah. is. Beautiful. And they all come with that COA, man. I love that. They're gorgeous. Hal did such a great job. Now that, that cover was a product of, like Jack came up with the, the basic concept for that jabroni tribute. Um, and the, the concept, the way it came out initially was we wanted to, to show like the fallen brothers in the background somehow. <clears throat> and then me and him kind of talked it out, hashed it out, gave it to how he killed it. And then the three of us talked about uh, putting, you know, a little something for, for Edwin on there as well. Um, but that was kind of after the fact because some people were asking us, uh, like, did you intentionally want to do a Jabroni tribute cover? And the answer is is no. Like that concept was developed. And then we thought it would be a nice touch at the end to add in the RIP. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and then we were trying to figure out how to do it because initially we wanted to have him on like street level in the street and maybe have it like graffitied on a wall or like on, on the sidewalk or something. And then we talked about how, and then we, we talked about having a concept of like them, like watching over him, like for, in the clouds, that's kind of like the overall concept. Right. Um, like them looking down on him and watching him. And um, so then once we pitched that to how he put, like he like elevated it all up into the sky. So he's, you know, kind of flying mm -hmm. and in the clouds behind him. So then someone, I forget who it might've been Jack said, let's put it on the star. And so that's what we did. Yeah. We wanted to make it small enough to kind of sneak by uh, Nickelodeon. <laughs> yeah. We did have discussions about that. Like we talked about, would it be, would it get approved? That was my, my main concern. I was like, uh, what should yeah, we Nickelodeon has to prove all those covers. Yep. So we wanted to make it kind of subtle. And again, because it was almost, um, you know, it wasn't a part of the original intention for the cover. We didn't want it to like impede on, on the artwork or the concept, or we didn't want it to be like front and center, so to speak. Uh, and then the gargoyle was, Hal sent me that, Hal works fast. I don't know if, if people know this or not, but Hal will crank out a cover in a day or two from zero to finished product. The dude is amazing. I, I, I don't know how he does it. He works so fast. So he sent me the second cover and he's like, hey, check out what I just did with this gargoyle. I showed it to Jack and Brian and they were like, second cover. And I was like, really? You know, and then we had a discussion, which one's the A, which one's the B. And then we wanted to make the Fallen Brothers cover with the Jabroni tribute, the more limited. So we decided to go with 250 on that and 450 on the, the gargoyle. And I honestly don't know which one I like more. I mean, they're just badass, both of them. Love both of them. We are dying to get Hal on some more covers, though. But like I said, IDW is on hold. Yeah. I was told that it would be um, a few months probably before we can do more exclusives for them. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. They can't keep a president for more than two months. They got some issues. Yeah, there's some internal stuff going on there. So. I was going to say, there were 71 variants for issue one. And I mean, it was, um, I will say this that, that book was one of the best reads that I've personally ever run it was good right lowly good yeah nice. yeah i loved it it was so good uh so really quick i'm going to ask one more question and then we can talk about uh other stuff happening in the future possibly cool. uh, i do a lot of power ranger reveals and team and t reveal covers on my channel but what are some of the other or like overall what are some of your like top sellers in terms of titles or exclusives on your uh website uh, to anything Megan, to be honest, anything Megan touches. That's why, I mean, to jump ahead, but to stay in the lane, uh, keep an eye out for that haha -ha number one from Image. Uh, we got Megan on that, and it's going to be a creepy ass cover. Um, I'm hoping we can get it all the way over the finish line. <clears throat> I, I, I will say this I, I, I have also Megan on Something is Killing the Children number 16 which is the start of a new a new arc. And just before I got on with you, uh, my concept that I think I showed Brian, um, Boom declined the concept. So I have to go in a different direction. Dang. We were going to do it. I might as well just Because they're going to use it themselves. <laughs> I hope not, man. I hope not. But we, we wanted to do an homage to the Evil Dead original movie poster with Bruce Campbell where he's got the, the chainsaw up over his head and um, where it says evil dead down the bottom in red in that certain font, we were going to put something that's killing the children. And then peeking out from behind Bruce Campbell is a woman screaming. So I took that little octopus guy, um, that little stuffed octopus guy. And I said to Megan, let's have him like popping out screaming and I'll send it to you, Steve. I want to uh, see it. Because we got all the way through the concept and I had Megan send me a concept, but then they shot it down. So it's a, it's a great looking cover, man. It's a great looking cover. And we were going to keep it a really low print run. But how, how bad do those artists get when their renders get shut down? Do they get pretty pissed? No, I mean, they, they understand the process. They're all professionals. Um, and it doesn't take them that long. Some of the sketches we get are really rough, but Megan puts a little bit more into it usually. 
Um, but yeah, anything with Megan on it is going to sell. Um, so that's why I said, keep an eye out for haha ha number one. That's going to be January. Uh, super creepy cover. If I didn't already say that like five times, I'm so excited about this project. It's very disturbing. It's very disturbing, but it's awesome. And then in February, we have uh lock and key Sandman crossover. Number one that Megan did. We're going to have two covers for that. And, um, It'll be in the Bolo box. So if, if you're not, you know, well, I guess you can't sign up for Bolo boxes, but Jack might have some um, uh, in his box for sale. But we're going to have that. That's a thousand print run uh, and a 500 limited black and white, both virgin covers, Lock and Key Sandman crossover number one. Uh, that'll be February. Uh, but yeah, I just, anything Megan is just on fire hot. I will say out of our Draken covers, the Hal Laren sold like lightning. Um, how, we still have some of those left. Uh, the the last Ronins, obviously by Hal, just sold out pretty fast too. I remember when when that went up for sale. I was like, I got to get on there within the first thirty minutes to make sure I get myself a copy. So I was thank, yeah. thankful, like I'm happy that I was able to get myself, and I ordered one for Adrian too. So I was happy to get one. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, and also John Boy John Boy Myers too. Uh, his stuff sells like crazy. His we only find them when they're dead. I might have one set left of the whole set, maybe. Oh, maybe are those the ones with uh, like there was like four different covers that two rows announced, and like one of them I want to say was like a grayscale, but with that red tint coming out of the eye. Yeah, there's three cover set. Um, his erratic sold out, like the set sold out, and we're gonna have him on some bigger projects coming up. Uh, in the new year, we're, we're going to, we're going to be doing Marvel DC stuff. Uh, we're working with Greg Horn on some Marvel stuff oh, he's for, a cool dude. <clears throat> for January. We have him on, um, Gwenham versus carnage. And if I could tell a quick story, is that cool about black cat? Number one? Of course. I, I don't want to take up too much of your time. So however long you want to hang out, that's cool with me. So. so I don't know if anybody remembers Greg did a black cat number one, I don't know, two years ago. And it was it was black cat with a white background. She was on her knees, kind of sideways, like hugging a Peter Porker plush. So the black cat number one coming out in January. I think it's I think it's January. Maybe it's later this month. But it's a king and black crossover. And so for the cover B, I pitched that we do like a reverse image of his black cat number one from the previous black cat number one. But it, but she's holding. Uh, pork grinder which is like the venomized plush or the venomized uh, peter porker and he was all down to do it and th again this is something on the inside that people from outside aren't going to really ever hear about but there's so many crazy things that can go wrong so he got hit with a hurricane like a week or two ago and uh he got flooded out so he 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 couldn't make the deadline for black cat to finish the art for black cat number one so we had to scrap the whole project so that was going to be our first Marvel project was that black hat with, oh, with. Greg. So now we're going to do um, Gwenham versus carnage number one mm -hmm. and uh, probably a two cover set. And we're working through the concept with them. Now um, I pitched a couple things. My favorite pitch didn't get accepted, but again, when you work with the artist, you have to, you know, there's give and take. Like I might think that this idea is great. They might think it's complete crap. And they want to go in a different direction. And you got to know when to say, okay, like th he's the artist. I'm not, I'm not an artist, right? I'm, I'm a government employee that sells comics basically at the end of the day. <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'm a, I'm a fan. I'm, you know, first and foremost, I'm not the artist. So, you know, I trust his judgment on that. Um, but yeah, going into next year, we're going to be working with um, uh, Kyle New, um, Derek Chu. Greg Horn, like we have some John Boy Meyer again on, on bigger stuff. So we have a nice, and you know, we have how we have Megan. Um, yeah. I mean, we have a nice, a nice stable of uh, artists that we're working with on, on the regular. Uh, we have Josh Burns coming up. I know Brian, you, you like Josh Burns, right? Love Josh Burns. We have him on a red Sonya uh, coming up. Uh, super excited to get in touch with him. Like whenever an artist that I love gets back to me, I get all giddy. You know, you got I mean? more John Royal. I do, yeah, or or well, we do because you're going to have some of it too. <laughs> but yeah, Vampirella fifteen and sixteen are both John Royal. Um, 
And then I think I don't think we made 17, but for 18, uh, yeah, we have somebody lined up for 18 that I can't say yet. But I want to answer Adrian's question right now. <laughs> uh -huh. This one's going to be super easy. And John, you know the answer for that. And it's got to be for me, my favorite is G.I. Joe 276, the Wu Tang homage. Right. Oh, yeah. That's why yeah. as soon as I said that's a no-brainer. Like there's a lot that oh, I'm, cool. I'm super excited on. And and like John mentioned, 95% of these vans I probably take the least amount of credit on because I was there on the calls. I helped put them up on the site and stuff like that. But the creative out there, I was there to offer like I was a tiebreaker on votes, I guess you could say. But yeah. most of the creative process was John and Jack. And then I was just there to listen. But the Wu Tang one, when Jack started bringing up, this is right when the the Marvel hip hop cover started taking off again. Brought this came up with Jack, and no doubt we tried it on what we tried it on. Um, Turtles, MNT. yeah, we tried yeah. it on one Nickelodeon said <laughs> Hasbro said <laughs> my, favorite, my favorite. Nice, yeah, we had it for uh, for this cover. This was supposed to be TMNT 112, so this this was approved for 112. And then 111 got hung up. So I was emailing them, emailing them, emailing them. Hey, what's going on with this? What's going on? They're like, we're waiting to hear back from Nickelodeon. And then they shot it down. They didn't give a reason why, but um, but then we submitted it through IDW for G.I. Joe. We made a real quick pivot on that. Um, and, you know, I, we still have some of those left, um, but that sold like crazy too. And again, just to give you an insight on how it works. So Brian and Jack came up with the concept. I was like, yeah, okay. Like I'm a big, I'm I'm a heavy metal guy. Like I'm way, way. Can I like, we do a Lamb of God? <clears throat> Lamb of God, Slayer. You know, I like old school '80s '80s metal, Black Sabbath. Teen and Life to Go. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, like, I uh, I'm not huge into like hip hop stuff. That's more my wife and and Brian and Jack. But when they brought that up, I was like, oh man, that's pretty cool. So. We did, Hal did the one concept, right? The, the main cover. And then the B cover, he just sent me. He's like, hey, check out what I do with this, John. I just put the CD case on the desk and I put a bunch of grenades and bullets and stuff around it. And I looks like it's a little overexposed with the lighting. And I was like, whoa, man, that's hot. I showed it to Jack and Brian. They loved it. And I was like, all right, two covers. We're doing two covers. So yeah, and that's that, that was a risky one, right? Like I... I feel like certain projects, like I was super nervous about Erratic, super nervous. You know, when we go live, you know, I'm just gonna let everybody know, I get really nervous. I'm like, oh man, I wonder if people are gonna like this. Cause I, I love just about every cover we do, you know, right. but I, I feel like they're my, my children in a way. So I feel very biased. So I, I love, I love all of them. They're like, like my little babies, you know, but I don't know if anyone else is gonna like it. Right. And when we went live on GI Joe, I'm like, man, I on 276, I'm like, I have no idea. This could completely bomb or it could do great. And it did great. I mean, we still have some some sets left, but man, that sold. That cover really sold. So oh, okay. yeah. I didn't realize there were so many uh GI Joe fans. But I, I mean I guess big Power Rangers fans, everyone's fans of something. Well, the good thing about that co that cover is it crosses over to multiple niches, right? You can get over to the Wu Tang hip hop side, you get over to the GI Joe side, get over to just the nostalgia in general. Maybe comic book people that aren't really comic readers, but they like GI Joe and they like Wu Tang. So True. you gotta protect your neck. Yeah, and I also feel like that there's people that um, maybe collected all the hip hop variants, and mm -hmm. I feel like they felt like they needed to get this one too. That makes sense. And we have another concept that that might be in the works too for another hip hop homage. So, oh, we were getting ready to pull the trigger on it. I'm not going to say what it is, um, but IDW, like I said, kind of shut down production. Mm -hmm. And Brian, uh, Erica, my wife, also told me to let you and Jack know that um, when we do the next one, she's in on it. She's in on on concept uh, as far as what cover we do and all that type of stuff. My yeah. wife is, the next one is another favorite. Yep. Yeah. So she wants to get more involved on a creative on that one. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Nice. So we'll see. We'll see. Cool. Well, I appreciate. Uh, Menudo. Menudo. 
<laughs> Nobody knows who that is, bro. <laughs> uh, that concept is mine. It's mine. <laughs> You're still watching. Don't yeah. stay, can't wait for that. Dude, nice. That's hilarious. That's awesome. Well, I do appreciate Brian and John for hanging out with me tonight. This was like a lot of fun just talking with you guys and having everyone else on here. Again, uh, I'm going to try to pull this up really quick. Uh, use the code BURK54. Get 25% off your order tonight at the 616comics.com. And uh, they have some really cool stuff. Um, Power Rangers, DC, Marvel, Team and T, a lot of really cool stuff. G.I. Joe, obviously. So Yeah, G.I. Joe. We have uh, tomorrow night is um... – my, wait, tomorrow night? What's tonight? Monday? Mm -hmm. Wednesday night. We have uh, Mighty Morphin number two by Diego Galindo. Um, that's a shared exclusive with uh, with Joel Czar. So mm -hmm. once we started doing Power Rangers stuff, I ended up talking to Luis uh, or Jose, depending on uh, one's his middle name, one's his first name. Right. Um, but we ended up talking to Luis over Joel Czar uh, about some projects. And so we we have some really exciting shared exclusives coming up with him. For my awesome. Orphan three, four, and five. I was talking to him today about it. Wow. And cool. where do you see the artist we got for number three? Man, Steve, I'll send it to you after oh, the show. I want to hear all this info, man. And it I, is amazing. This guy is amazing. I don't think anyone's ever – I don't know. I don't know if people have heard of this guy before or seen this guy before, but his stuff is so unique. So amazing. Um, and I, I give credit to, to Luis on that one for, for finding that guy. That wasn't my pick. That wasn't my find. But I love the Grand Off Wolverine 3 color virgin variant. I have a couple of them. Might have to use a code BURK54 to get the. No. Yeah. No. I, on my spinner rack in our living room. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, that's currently upstairs. My wife can back me up on this. That's on the spinner rack right now. Is it Rob, is it Rob Liefeld? <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> Not Rob Liefeld. That's Jack. That would be Jack's pick. Jack would pick Rob Liefeld for, for some. Yeah, we, we might we might be we'll, – we'll figure something out maybe sometime. Oh, we'll, we're doing this. We're definitely doing this. We'll, we'll, we will figure it out hopefully soon. Yeah, we already talked about that actually. We have. We have. We have talked about that. Well, thank you again, uh, Brian and John. That was a lot of fun um, hanging out with you guys and chit-chatting and having your wife comment – that was pretty cool, and yeah. uh, it was just fun. So I appreciate you guys for joining me. Thank and, you. Uh, thank you again to I need to, I need to update this now. I got another member on here. I, I always say this at the end of all my live streams. Thank you to my channel members. We got Ruben Guzman, Legion of Comics, The Cover Collector, Mike V, Deep Dive Comics, Flash sixty seven ninety two, Comic Proposer, Collectibles Lounge, and Kidrano Prince who just joined today. Thank you to the friends here, DJ Links, and my supporters here as well. Thank you guys for joining me. I had a great time. Yeah, yeah. thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and as always, go cats, cowabunga, and it's morphin' time. <laughs>